We live in an in-between time. We know and we have celebrated the coming of the light into the world in Jesus. Five weeks ago at Easter, we celebrated. We lit the Paschal candle. We celebrated with the lighting of the new fire. As we sang the glory on that beautiful Easter vigil, the lights came up, filling this place, changing the darkness into light, reminding us of the light and the life, the warmth and the comfort that comes to us in the risen Jesus. But yet every morning when we open the newspaper, we are aware that the powers of darkness remain around us. Look at China, the, what is it, the last two weeks, how many kids have been hurt and injured in China from crazy people going into schools? How many people have been blown up? I was reading in the uh, paper this morning, there was they, fortunately they found a, a, a car full of bombs in Times Square last night that fortunately didn't blow up. How many people would have been killed if that had gone off? There's still war and violence and hatred all over the place. The powers of darkness have not yet been completely conquered, but yet the light is with us. We need to be the ones to bring that light to the world, to be the lights in the midst of that darkness. And how do we do that? John, in his gospel, gives us the key. Jesus says, my new commandment is love one another. It sounds very simplistic. And in some ways it is. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love others. And then he says something amazing. He says, this is how you shall know, this is how everyone shall know that you are my disciples. Not that you go to church every day, not that you pray your beads every day, not that you contribute a lot to the church, not that you're orthodox, not that you're any of this stuff that we define discipleship as. Jesus says, you, everyone will know you are my disciples because you love one another. But Jesus reminds us, as I have loved you, is how you are to love one another. That doesn't mean a nice little t-shirt that says, I heart everyone, or your bumper sticker on your car. Uh, it doesn't mean a nice warm feeling inside to those people who like you. The love of Jesus means living a real, tangible life, loving everybody. Not only those who like you, but loving those people who hate you. Loving those people who can't stand you. Loving those people whom you can't stand to be in the same room with. Loving the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Loving those who will never love you back. Loving those who are incapable of receiving love. And as Jesus did, loving those who crucify you. That's the love that Jesus is talking about. Not the warm fuzzies, but the reality of a lived love. And it is only that love that will bring that light of Christ into the world. It is only that love that will conquer the power of darkness and allow us to see the coming of that new Jerusalem that we hope for with all our hearts. There's a wonderful story that's told about John the Evangelist who wrote the book of Revelations and, and the section from the gospel that we read today. John, according to tradition, is the only one of the uh, apostles who did not die a martyr's death. John died of old age, probably around the year 100. It meant probably he was in his 90s when he died. And the story goes about one of his disciples speaking with him as John is on his deathbed. And he says, Master, you've lived a tremendously long life. You have seen the Lord. You are a tremendously wise and holy man. What words can you give us on your deathbed. And John looked at his disciples and said, love one another. And his disciple looked back at him with a scowl on his face and said, Master John, that's all you ever say to us. Love one another, love one another, love one another. Isn't there anything else? 
And John simply looked at him and said, if you love one another, nothing else is needed.